put your hands together for New Orleans' own Carl LeBlanc. first start playing music? How did, how did that come Oh, out? wow. Let me see. I did my first paying gig when I was 12 years old. What? And uh, New Orleans is the kind of place where you can actually make a living playing guitar. So luckily, that's all I've ever done, play guitar. Right. Who are some of the... Now, I know, now, I've been hearing about some of the people you play with, and it's just really eclectic. I mean, who are, who are, some, of the, who are some of these people that you've played with in your time? Uh, let's see. Uh, the band that uh, recorded this song, Second Line Stop Incorporated. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was my band back in uh, 1969, 70. Uh, let's see. The, the Dirty Dozen. Yeah. I, help, I helped uh, in the early stages of that group. You know, I'm uh -huh. on their first recording, Feet Don't Fail Me Now. All the right. Dirty Dozen Brass Band. And, uh, hmm. It goes on, I play with Fats Domino, like you said. It was his birthday yesterday. I toured with him for a yeah, while, yeah? yeah? Okay, Fats, I wonder how old he is now. You know, whenever I go by Fats, he, he called me his vegetarian guitar player because he has like four guitar players in the band, and uh, you know, 
whenever he cooks a pot of gumbo, he puts like about three or four hundred dollars worth of meat in the gumbo. <laughs> Any kind of meat you could think of, right? And so yeah. whenever he's laughing because he knows I can't eat it, everybody else in the band is eating his gumbo. He makes his own hoghead cheese, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Real down home. How did you end up playing with Preservation Hall? Bob French is actually the one who brought me over there. And uh, the first night I played, I got a guitar for the, for the occasion and went and did the job. And the lady told me, oh, I'm sorry, but the way you wear your hair doesn't fit with the image of Preservation Hall. Yeah. So back in those days, I probably told her to kiss my ass or something. Oh, oh are we on TV now? Can I say that? You can say that. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure I told her something like that, you know. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so it was a long time before they asked you back, huh? Right, about 20 years yeah. later. <laughs> right. <laughs> You actually have Norvin Kimball's banjo, right? The first banjo player at Preservation Hall, Norvin Kimball, gave me his banjo a few months before Katrina. He really did, so. And wow. that was one of the things that I saved, one of the few things that I have left. So other than being a really great musician, you are also, you're also an educator. You're teaching the next generation of young New Orleans musicians? Well, most of the guitarists in town, a lot of them have taken lessons from me, like uh, Detroit Brooks and, uh, let's see, Anthony Brown and uh, Jonathan Freilich. Uh, many of the guitarists that we know around town yeah. have taken lessons with me. And, uh, and I sit and watch all of them get to be Gambit Award winners and off the <laughs> like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm, I'm using that, you know, I'm just saying, well, you know, I'm getting famous because of my students. I do it like yeah. that. But uh, as you mentioned, I do have a group of students now. Uh, I'm directing the Preservation Hall Junior Band. And you should hear these kids. Unbelievable. I mean, got a 16-year-old trumpet player named John Michael who's playing like Lee Morgan and everything already, wow. you know. And uh, all of these guys are great. We took them to Carnegie Hall last year. They perform. played at Carnegie Hall? Yeah, they played two oh, songs man. with the Preservation Hall band, so imagine that on their resume. I went to wow. Carnegie Hall when I was 14, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Besides teach them how to play their instruments, what other things are you trying to, to get, a, get across to them? Preservation Hall is dedicated to the tradition of New Orleans music. Yeah. So I'm teaching them all of these old songs, firstly, and then a lot of the etiquette that goes on with the music, uh, how you're supposed to carry yourself to represent New Orleans music. You know, the old cats used to tell me, just wear a clean white shirt and a dark suit, you know, and that's it, you know, and play the music, and that's all you're supposed to do. And uh, for the most part, playing at the, at the country club and, you know, and at the yacht club and all of that, I, I feel, wow, a lot of times I'm thinking that it's supposed to be a next generation of this music now because as I look around at the Metairie Country Club, the only ones who are there that are black are the people serving drinks and the people who are playing the music, you know. So uh, that was part of the reason why I didn't feel good about playing Preservation Hall back in the 60s and 70s because I felt that it, it was an image that I didn't want to portray. But I have a lot more respect for this music now because I tried to play other kinds of jazz and I found out uh, it was like, I was trying to do trigonometry before I learned arithmetic, right. you know, yeah. so I had to go back and learn, I had to learn arithmetic first before I could, you know, start doing train and bird and all of that. Wow, so you, you started out at the branches and now you're coming back down to the roots of it. And I like that. Passing them on. Right. Well, it'd be a big honor for you to play another song for all of us. Would you like to hear another song? Can you do that for us, Carl? Yes, I can. All right. This song is an adaptation of Louis Armstrong's West End Blues. Uh, we do it a little bit different, kind of put some words to it, because uh, it took me longer than it took some. Who's to say when this affair began? Maybe Sunday evenings with the radio on BOK and Al Gurrier had sparked it. All my folks' friend Joe Burns, who fanned the flame, that led me to make a friend on West End. Let's see.
as I sit Strumming chords of sad refrain On punch a train I just can't help but wonder if Satchmo played his riff in the moonlight on a night like this by a seafood house where he couldn't get in on sandy beaches and sea walls where he couldn't swim that's why i'm drinking and thinking and making a friend with the blues on west end That's why I'm drinking and thinking and making a friend with the blues on West End. Carl LeBlanc, everybody. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Another quick break, and we're going to be back with funny man Chris Champagne, so y'all don't go nowhere now.